Hey everybody, it's Troy. I just want to, before we get started with this video, I want to thank everybody. We finally busted to 13,000 mark. We're actually at 13,050 subscribers at the time that I'm making this video. I want to say thank you guys so much. Your support of this channel means everything to me and I'm glad I'm doing things out there that people actually want to watch and actually view. While we're here, please, if you don't subscribe to my channel, at least hit that like button. That puts me into the YouTube algorithm and that puts the information that you find important in front of other people that might feel the same way. So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to take a look at a distro that I've had recommended uh, many times in my comments. It's Big Linux. Now, if you zip on over to their website, which is biglinux.com.br, you'll come to this page right here. Now, Firefox automatically translated it for me, but I do know on a couple other browsers, if you don't have a translation add-on on your browser, it could be difficult to read. This one did it automatically, so if you're using Firefox, you shouldn't have a problem. I'm actually using Fire Dragon. But you come over to Big Linux's website, and it just basically states that this distribution is derived from Manjaro repositories. Now, this has went through several different facelifts over the last two or three years. It was based on different distributions, but now it is based on Manjaro. And when you go to download it, they actually give you three different options. You've got Big Linux that's got kernel 5.10. So if you've got some older hardware or you're, you're trying to do some things in a more stable environment, that might be for you. They're recommended, which is kernel 5.15. And then they've got kernel 5.19. What I'm going to be taking a look at today is kernel 5.19. And we're going to go ahead and come down here. You can download it or get it through Torrent. And then it breaks down your main programs, KDE Plasma, LibreOffice, GIMP, Firefox, and Brave. And then you've got some Ventoy download, Belina Etcher download, or UNet Bootin download. They give you links to those right there. So if you want to burn it to a USB and boot into it, you can. And then down here on settings, it shows you the minimum requirement, 64-bit Intel or AMD, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of storage space, and then live USB mode. How to choose the Big Linux version you want to use. And then see how to save Big Linux on your USB stick using Ventoy. And then if you do go up top, you've got download support, photos, videos, news, others, contribute, and contact. That pretty much covers their website. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. So if you like what you see, you can go over, download it, and give it a try for yourself. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close out of this, and we're going to open it up in boxes. Now the reason I'm showing it actually loading up instead of me just plugging on over to the desktop is I want to show you some interesting and neat things that are coming with Big Linux that you don't get in other distributions or you do get in some distributions but not that many. You kind of get a choice of what layout you want and it's got a good splash screen, it's got a good boot screen and I'm only giving it two gigabytes of RAM so it may take just a little bit to load up. It is what it is. Now I do want to say that if you're using Manjaro or you're wanting to get away from a different distribution or something like that and get into something a little bit more interesting with maybe a little bit more eye candy. That doesn't mean a lot to some people, but it does to others. Big Linux is actually a good looking distribution. Now, one thing I do not like, and you'll see here in a second, is that you do get a certain setup that still includes the Latte Dock. Now, with so many questions around the Latte Dock right now, is it going to stay up? Is somebody else going to pick up the development of it? That right there kind of seems iffy to me. Maybe switch it over to Cairo, but that's just me. You might disagree with me. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. So once it finally boots up, you actually got to pick your language. I'm going to go ahead and pick English United States. And then it's going to let you choose a theme. Do you want to go with the Breeze, Breeze Dark, Fluent Solid Dark, or Fluent Solid? And then you've got uh, Fluent, Fluent Dark, Materia, and Materia Dark. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with Breeze Dark. And then right over here, you get to actually pick the way your desktop's laid out. You've got the classic look, your classic KDE. Then you've got kind of a K-Unity, which is a take on the Unity from Ubuntu years ago. Then you've got a new layout. You've got the next G. And we're going to scroll down. You've got a modern. And then you've got desk X. Now you can change these once you're on desktop. In virtual machine, they're kind of laggy. I'll show you that anyway. 
but just know that if you put it on a USB or you're running it on bare metal, it'll run a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go with Next G, and we will go ahead and let that boot up and show us what we're getting. I like the splash screen, I like the background, I like the way they integrate the big logo into the center of the background. I just, I like the overall look of this distribution, but what we are gonna need to do is we're gonna need to zip on over here and we're gonna need to adjust the actual resolution of the distro so we can actually see what's going on. So I'm gonna go down here and go ahead and click on big and look for settings. And we will go ahead and go to, see if that's Manjaro setting manager, if that'll let us take care of what we need to. There's hardware, time and date. Let's close, I just need regular old settings. So where's just regular old settings? Settings, system settings, there it was. Why didn't you guys point that out to me? I guess I need to put my glasses on so I can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and go to display. And there's the display configuration. Let's go ahead and click that open and let's go ahead and change that to 1080. Let's go ahead and apply that. And there it is right there. Let's go ahead and keep that. Zip that over there and close out of that. As you can see right here, you kind of get a nice little dock down here. And like I said, I've only got two gigabytes of RAM issued to this in GNOME boxes. So it might be a little jerky and jumpy, but if you put it on a USB or you're running on bare hardware, it's gonna be a lot faster. So what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Dolphin. And yes, you get the global menu up here, and then you've got Dolphin right here. And like I said, it's got the wobbly windows with only two gigabytes of RAM, it's a little jerky. Let's go ahead and look at something right now. Let's see what we're running system-wide. Let's see, where's it at? Cases guard. Let's go ahead and see what kind of resources we're using on this one. System load. We're running about uh, 0.75 gigabytes. That's not too bad. Uh, with Dolphin open, and we're running, obviously, this is Latte. Let's go up here and right-click. Yeah, see, that's the Latte dock. So you do have the Latte dock running in the background, and you're only using about 0.75 gigabytes of two gigabytes that I have issued to the machine. Now, what I'm going to say here is, with Latte dock running... Compared to Garuda, because I am I had to reinstall Garuda because you all are familiar with the problems that I had with Nobara. But I reinstalled Garuda, and Garuda, when it had Latte Dock running in the background, was at about 1.2, 1.3 gigabytes. And when I got rid of Latte, it actually dropped down to 0.75. So right here with Latte Dock running in the background, you've got 0.75. So that's not too bad right there on resource usage. And we're only using about 1% of the CPU. Now the wobbly windows will probably make that spike up a little bit, but not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. And we'll kind of take a look around here. You can just see you've got the control center over here. This is what I wanna point out to you because you can go to the control center. And when it pops up, you've got a lot of different things you can do over here. You've got themes, desktop and settings, restore the program configuration, system and hardware information. So if you wanted to change your theme, you could come right over here and go to open, and it's gonna give you the same options you got at boot. Now I'm gonna leave the theme where it is. You can go to desktop. That's the classic KDE look, and then you've got the KUnity. Then you've got the next G. Then you've got the new. I'm gonna try modern and see what happens here. And that popped up. Uh, I actually kinda like that better than the dock. I think I'll leave that right there because I'm not a big fan of the global menu. Scratch that. I do like the global menu when there's a distribution that already has a top panel, but I'm not a big fan of the top panel. So if I can get away from that, I generally do. So I think I will leave this right here. But you can see over here, you can change your desktops. You've got six different choices there. You've got different themes you can change it to. And you could also probably install some other themes. So that's pretty neat. I like that. It comes out of the box with that. So that's pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got your network and internet. Connect to the internet. Connect to internet using Android. Integration with Google Drive and OwnCloud. Uh, customize. Application style. So this is kind of a system settings. But it's been barred down into their control center with their choices and things that you can change there now it's got a little moon down here if you click on that okay so you can switch i like that you can switch it from a light to dark with one click okay let's go over here you've got region and language multimedia audio mixer equalizer sound and microphone helvum accounts privacy 
let's go look at about. That's what I wanted to look about. Let's see. Let's go to Info Center. Let's pull that up. And what are we looking at right here? You've got KDE Plasma 5.25.5, Frameworks 5.97, QT version 5.15, and then you've got kernel version 5.19.7 Manjaro. So if you're somebody that likes Manjaro, but you're wanting to change your pace, this is definitely the distribution for you. And if you're somebody that is wanting to go to an Arch-based system with a little bit more control over looks and things that you can do with it, you might want to choose this one over Manjaro. Now, what I would worry about is if Big Linux suffers from some of the problems that you get with a Manjaro distribution when there's updates sometimes. You have some issues there. I don't know if those carry over, but it would take a little bit of using. And this might go on my list, guys. I was considering going with OpenSUSE after my Nabara fiasco, and I might end up giving this one a shot. I don't know yet, but we will see. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got privacy, server, devices, system, development. You've got a nice little control panel here. I really do like that. Now what I want to know is if they're piggybacking off of Manjaro, does that mean they have Paymax? So let's add and remove web apps, add and remove software. Let's go look at that first. So let's go ahead and open that up. And you're running basically Paymax. So what you want to do is go over here first. And I want to see if they have the AUR. Okay, they do have AUR. You can enable it. Okay, it's already enabled out of the box. Okay, guys, so AUR is enabled out of the box. And you also have Flatpak enabled out of the box. So if we go to General, can you go ahead and you can use mirrors from Worldwide. You can actually refresh those mirrors. Okay, well, let me close out of that. So if we... Do a search. Can we do a search for something like OBS Studio? There's OBS Studio. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it's right there. Now, that's one thing I do like about this is there have been many different Arch distributions that use Paymac that when I run them in a live environment, you can't actually look up software because it actually has to update and then install a bunch of other data and dependencies before you can even do searches for software so I like that let's see do they have GIMP they do have GIMP it's right there you click on it and it pops right up so you're going to be using Paymac and the AUR to install software so that's definitely a plus let's go ahead and close out of that now let's go back over here and it looked like it had add and remove web apps no web app added so if we added a web app so what could we call it so let's just say YouTube Dot com let's name it YouTube let's go ahead and detect name and icon so it'll detect the name YouTube web app icon it automatically gave it to you and can we go ahead YouTube TV mode I don't want to do that let's go ahead and add it the web app has been successfully added so we can close out of that now is this added to our regular menu or is it just Okay, so it's added right there. So if I click on that, and there is our YouTube app. Okay, so it's using uh, Brave Browser to open up our web app, our web app, YouTube app. We'll go ahead and maximize that. And like I said, there's going to be a little stutter there. I've only got two gigabytes of RAM issued to the machine. So you're going to have a little bit of that. Uh, I would really like to run this in a live mode. This might be the next distro I try to run as a daily driver. I'm going to be quite honest. And my question, let's go over here. Let's close out of that. Now, if I go over here and I put in YouTube, can we right click and pin that? Or let's open it back up. Okay, pop right back up. Now, can I right click and pin that to task manager and then close? So there's my YouTube web app. It's right there on my panel. So this is Big Linux Web Apps Manager. So if you somebody that's used Linux Mint and you're used to their, their web app uh, application that they have, this is something that's along those lines. And it's just bringing it over to an Arch distro uh, that's based on Manjaro. So I, I kind of like that application. That's pretty impressive. So we'll close out of that. Let's go ahead and open this back up. And then you've got games, graphics. Okay. So my question, can you change Edit Big Linux Application Launcher? Okay, that's just to change the logo or the icon, I'm sorry. Okay, 
so there's no changing your menu. I guess that would be different on different desktop themes that you picked. Um, configure your desktop and wallpaper. Let's see what kind of wallpapers we got involved here. Oh, they got some pretty wallpapers. Let's see. Let's try the Antelope Canyon. I like that. That's neat. Guys, I'm pretty impressed. Big Linux. Everybody that chimed in on my comments and told me to take a look at it, thank you, because it is definitely a decent looking distribution, and it might be something that I take a look at, maybe even test drive for 90 days. It's kind of a toss-up. It's between OpenSUSE and Big Linux now. So if you watch this video and you've got your two cents you want to put in on which distribution I should give a shot for the next 90 days, let me know. Should it be OpenSUSE or Big Linux? Do me a big favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, throwing us a donation over on PayPal, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.